Those Who Wish Me Dead comes from director Taylor Sheridan, who's really well known for his writing skills. He was responsible for films like Wind River, as well as Sicario, two of my favorite films of the last decade. And this time around, it stars Angelina Jolie. After witnessing a murder, a kid is on the run from a dangerous father and son in the Montana wilderness. I gotta reiterate that Taylor Sheridan is very talented from behind the camera, as well as when he's sitting at his desk writing a movie. The guy knows how to make a good film film, there is proof of that. But every now and then, everyone in Hollywood who does good things has a misstep or two. Recently, I reviewed a movie called Without Remorse, starring Michael B. Jordan that was on Amazon Prime, and Taylor Sheridan had a part in writing that movie. It was not a good movie, though. But I do think he bounced back with Those Who Wish Me Dead. This is a far better movie than Without Remorse, and it is his first film directing since Wind River, which is crazy to think about. That movie came out almost four years ago and I'm sure when the opportunity presented itself as well as to write this movie, he took it and did everything he could to make this a good movie. And I consider Those Who Wish Me Dead a good time. This is an audience movie. A lot of that is Taylor Sheridan, but the cast also helps elevate this movie. Angelina Jolie gives one of her better performances in this movie of the last decade. This actually might be her best performance of the last decade. I liked her character the most in Those Who Wish Me Dead too. Her character has a backstory that's really tragic. There is a lot of PTSD involved there. If you guys saw Only the Brave, her character does the same exact thing that the people in that movie did, fight forest fires. I liked her character a ton in this movie and her performance was really good. We also got treated to John Bernthal, Aiden Gillen, who always does a fantastic job playing a villain in every single movie or TV show that he gets a chance in. Nicholas Holt, an actor that I really like, especially in the X-Men franchise. Jake Weber is in the movie. He plays the kid's dad who is killed and his actor accent certainly comes through from time to time in this movie, which is a little bit of a bummer. And this movie's child actor, Finn Little, knocks it out of the park. I'm not surprised because despite so many kids being casted in big roles like this in the past and them sucking, I believe in the talent of Taylor Sheridan being able to find the absolute best child actor for his roles, and in this movie, he found them. Beyond the cast and the director, this is another fun neo-western Taylor Sheridan movie. You feel that neo-western vibe, there is tons of grittiness, a lot of shootout scenes, it's all the Taylor Sheridan stuff you would expect to see in this kind of movie. And the forest fire element was a great choice too, it added so much tension to the movie. I made this comparison already, but it reminded me so much of Only the Brave, a movie that came out the same exact year as when River where we see Josh Brolin and Miles Teller fight a bunch of forest fires. It's a great movie and this movie reminded me of that one. But I don't consider this movie anywhere close to as good as Wind River and certainly not Sicario. This film is absolutely a step down compared to those two. There are several conveniences in the movie. The villains wait on this one road and they just somehow happen to find their target on that one road when these people are coming from Florida all the way to Montana like how the heck did they know what road they would be on people just happen to be in the same place as other characters all the time it's very convenient not to mention cliched and there are some predictable moments that i saw coming from a mile away taylor sheridan the man known for making movies that are very unpredictable doesn't find a way to get around that here and when it comes to the movie's main villains we are never given a concrete reason as to why they are doing what they are doing we understand that the father of this little boy and his boss discover something about about these two men at their work, but we never learn what they discovered about these two guys. And after that, the movie pretty much just expects us to be okay with never finding out what this thing was. And then we meet Tyler Perry's character, who's only in one scene for some reason. Why do you bring on Tyler Perry for just one scene? And how much did that man get paid for only saying a couple of lines? It makes me wonder if they plan on tying up loose ends with a sequel, considering that they never did anything else with Tyler Perry's character in the movie. Movie. It's just weird to include him if you're not going to utilize him. You know what though? I had a fun time watching Those Who Wish Me Dead on my bed at 11 o'clock a.m. on HBO Max. It was enjoyable for me. It had great performances. Taylor Sheridan knows how to write a thrilling movie. It's not nearly as perfect as some of other Sheridan's gems, but I still like this movie. So with that said, I am giving Those Who Wish Me Dead a 67%.
All right, for those of you who also happen to see Those Who Wish Me Dead, be sure to let me down below in the comment section what your thoughts are of it. And as always, if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.